live lore, dead lore, genre, and tone. These are the things we're going to be talking about here on the third and final installment of the Player Expectation video series, thanks to Duke Quakem in this comment. Now, what we're going to talk about today here on Player Base, which is a channel about ludology and me being GR, is more about how to present information and how to read information so that you know what to expect and you know how to set expectations with the people that you're playing with, both as a player and as a game runner. The difference between live lore and dead lore it can also be thought of as, like we've talked about it before, in terms of, you know, dead lore is something that's static that sets up player expectation or game runner expectation for what you're looking for before the game, what kind of game you're looking to play or what kind of game you're looking to present. And live lore is in-game, in, in character, letting people know what their character would know. Now, another way to think about this is that one of these things is out-of-character information, and the other one's in-character information. And the thing about the out-of-character information is that if you're going to a game and you're saying it's in the far future uh, in a pseudo-medieval um, intergalactic fiefdom where everything is controlled by a magical substance that these giant worms make and these fish people swim around in so that they can literally collapse space upon itself and people fight with knives inside force fields. That is not something that someone would say if they lived on Arrakis, right? It's not the far future, it's the present day. That's just regular stuff for them. In the same way that if you were running a role-playing game in ancient Rome, you might say in the far future in some, you know, um, collapsing economic transnational empire, uh, people are struggling to get their homes, uh, mortgages paid, you know, and um, they spend a lot of their times online as a consequence. That wouldn't be the far future to us. That would just be today. <laughs> and look, I, I feel you. <laughs> um, but you didn't come here for political commentary uh, unless I'm doing a video on how to set up a political uh, hierarchy that is engaging and believable for a game, which I will do, uh, but not today. So one of the reasons this is, I'm mentioning this is important is in character, no one would ever say that. Well, and that's why when you watch a movie or a film and some, someone's like, you know, I, as king who has stood for seven generations, refuse as my father has done before me, it always squicks you out of the fourth wall because people don't talk like that. And what we mean by people don't talk like that is that no one speaks in that context. That frame of reference for looking at a set of precepts about a setting is just completely out of character because you're inside the character, so you don't look at it that way. And it's ridiculous to refer to it that way, which is why I made the joke before, because it sounds a little funny. And it was just a joke, you know. Um, but in character information is something that the character in the game knows or in the story knows but the audience or the player doesn't necessarily and they don't know whether or not the character knows it so when you're running around part of the job part of the the fun of being a game master a dungeon master is that you know all that stuff and you're making it all work or you're looking at it in your head or you're winging it or really all three of those things and you know whether or not the player would know that and whether or not the character would know that and you inform the player. Now, that saying it to the player and not the character is out of character, right? It is um, out of character talk. But it keeps people in character because you're informing them in the moment of a choice that the character would make with the information they already have. They wouldn't have to ask, they would just know. You're informing the player so that the player knows. And in the same way, <laughs> you're informing the other players at the table, be you another player or the game master, of what you know and they need to know about playing with you. And at least, and when I say that, in terms of like setting player expectations, it could be that you just want to do Elf with Sword forever. Lord knows I do. 
I never get tired of it. But not everybody wants to do that. And not everyone wants to do it all the time, you know? Like, some people need to have a different breakfast uh, some mornings or maybe every morning. And some people can eat the same breakfast forever. This is to let people know what we're having for breakfast today, right? When you're setting up expectations for the game, you're setting up expectations for that game that you're agreeing to play, be it a long campaign or a one-shot, or just what sort of games you're looking to run and engage in, right? It's not forever. So when I'm talking about setting up expectations, this stuff isn't static. And that's important to mention because it, you're not married to any of this. And most of the time when I look at people having existential crises and freezing up about not knowing how to answer these questions, it's because they, they haven't considered the fact that it's not forever, which is why the, you know, the character video is so, yeah, I can't think of anything else. I, I think we've covered it. So we'll talk to you tomorrow about some other stuff. We'll talk to you later.